Hey guys, Waffle37 here. Today we're fighting the Mecha Drago. Among other things, I'm assuming. First off, what you want to do is boost your defense. Mecha Drago can hit hard. You know, so that attack just did. Don't use your equipment. Stab the Drago with its own fang. Which, as you might have be able to see on its sprite, is actually missing. Okay. Yeah, you want to be careful of the war cry because it's. Oh, a lag spike. Brute Force. Power Smash! Ah. What is this lag? Why do I keep doing that? So the bite is the, the weakest attack, and we have not yet to see the strongest attack. The power smash is kind of like the Casey bat from Earthbound, and that it misses a lot, but once you do it, it's definitely worth it. Although this is just stupid luck. There we go. There's the most powerful attack it knows. Well, second most powerful, but it only uses the most powerful once it's down all the way. I'm not sure what just happened. Why do I keep doing that? Drago tried one last attack. 272 damage! <laughs> the Mecha Drago became tame. That oh, wasn't that difficult. Wait, his shoes fell off. Why is he still wearing them in a sprite? It is possible that until now, the people of Tismilly Village had never known sadness. On sunny days and on cloudy days, they always greeted one another with smiles. They lived in harmony with the creatures of the forest. The strong would help the weak, and those who had things would share with those who had not. However, it now appears the villagers have learned all too much about sadness. Suddenly, everything is changing for the worse. When did this change begin? Where did it begin? What set it in motion, and why? 
almost as if toys. The peaceful animals are being transformed into strange, ferocious creatures that attack people. Some people, like Flint, have even had their families torn apart. Just what is the suspicious group that wears pig masks? Hint, they're called pig masks. <laughs> what are these eerie objects that soar through the once beautiful skies? And where could the missing class be? Oh, I don't know, right on the screen? The mysteries continue to pile up. And so the tale first begins. As a tragedy. This is the first time I've saved all game. Chapter 2, Thief Adventure. Duster, I speak to you now as my son, but as my pupil. Listen, the time has come. No, this is not something we've been looking forward to. I'd hope the time would not come, if at all possible. You and I have been constantly preparing for this day in the event that it would come. So it appears you finally have a chance to try out what I've been teaching you. The enemy's form is still unknown, but we must now change the way we live. Are you prepared? Of course not. Duster. Perhaps we would have been better off born in a different era. I forced excessive training upon you at a very young age, resulting in your leg handicap. Or at least that's my vague recollection of it. And there's the fact that I failed to raise you to fit in with the other villagers. It's all my fault, or so I seem to remember. You wish to hold a grudge against your father? Grudge away. If that'll make you happy, you can begrudge me all you want. But you do not get a choice in that matter. Duster, listen well. This is not a test or anything of that sort. This is an order. I'm now going to give you a mission. You will sneak into Oso Hey Castle. There you will find a certain important item and bring it back here. As for what the certain important item is, no, there's no need for me to tell you. The thief can't determine the value of what he steals to disgrace from the profession. In the basement, you will find items that I've prepared for you. The seven mystical thief tools. No, wait, where are the seven? <sighs> Whatever. Take them with you. They'll provide you useful during a battle with the enemy. There's six plus thunder bombs, so. So these are our thief tools. They are. I go into the goods. The wall staples, which we saw in chapter one. The siren beetle, which lets you get back straights. The hypno pendulum, which lets you put an enemy to sleep. Hear their heart, hear their heartbeat and combo to set heartbeat. The smoke bomb, which makes an enemy cry and their attacks miss. The scary mask, which lowers the enemy's offense. The tickle stick, which lowers their defense. And also looks almost exactly like the feather spray used to point at things in the menus. 
and the Tasmanian map, which is not a thief tool. <laughs> also, wait, where is it? There it is. If you hold L and R while entering the memo screen, I mean not the memo screen, the status screen, you get a memo screen. Sometimes these will be nice things to know. Pork saucers, huh? They don't even look like saucers, but whatever. What you're reading right now? The history of things you've experienced are automatic recording here as you go along. Be sure to check out once in a while, you may just learn something new. No, this memo menu is not accessible in the Japanese version, but the translation team made it accessible because it's so neat. Because this is a beta menu, some of the things mentioned here did not make it to the final version of the game. I'm gonna see if I can find any of these. Hey, so far all of these exist in the game, as a, as we know it right now. Gotta get a thunder bomb. Always gotta get a thunder bomb. The way I see it, the Thunder Bombs in this game are like the bottle rockets in Earthbound Beginnings. And that there's one place where you can get an infinite amount of them, and there are somewhat weak throwing items. I mean, somewhat weak compared to things you do later on. And also, hey, there's our playable character for Chapter 3, and the, uh, and the only midships you haven't seen yet. Hey, Butch. Well, an era of lag spikes has already started, so... Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 take place at the same time, and you get to see plot points during them from two different points of view, which I find kinda awesome. I recognize that theme anywhere. Is that the pork mothership? Can I just say I love the overworld music during this part? Ooh, what's this? Where's my pea shooters? A lot of people have noticed this, but the zombie ma man is dressed like Ness or Ninten, and the zombie lady is dressed like Anna or Paula. I think we forgot to put these things memories in the egg of light. Here's a great time to show off the thunder bomb. I just love this music so much. The zombie lady returned to the dust of the earth. He said.
put you. That theme is restricted not only to zombies, even though it's called zombies, but. Hi, Nepalite. How you doing? Oh, hey, a shovel. Oh, hey. The drawbridge is up. Well, that's silly. Auntie, 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 Aunt! From nowhere in particular, you hear a voice. And that voice is mine! Watch me stepping, will ya? I'm like, standing right here! I'm an ant! Don't you dare step on me! I've been watching you fight for a while now, but I just can't take it anymore. But it's all about rhythm, you know, like, boom, 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 and stuff. When you're in battle, there's a very specific rhythm that will match the enemy's beat. Pick up that rhythm, and victory will be yours. If you're really good, you can even pull off a 16 hit combo. You hear my name of these? Sound battles. Thank you very much! If you didn't notice, I tried to combo on that the zombies during that fight, and I only got a 2 hit combo. But. Oh, hey, more enemies to fight. Cool. The mobile grave. That's the easiest thing to combo in the whole game. This team is called Excel Rondo. And it definitely lives up to that name. 16 hit combo! As you notice, most characters have, like, a variance in what their combo tune, but due to a glitch, Duster doesn't. But, with that level gained, we shall end this episode here.